Good morning and welcome to today's daily devotional. I am Pastor Tammy checking in with you on the Wednesday after Thanksgiving. I'm back at my office today. Do you ever feel like it's kind of a guess where the pastor is for daily devotionals because we all kind of have our different spots that we post from or go live from. So some of us tend to be at home more often. Some of us tend to be at the office just depending on the day of the week. So I'm thinking that maybe I'll come up with some super creative uh, places to go live and see if you can just figure out where I am. So good morning, Ted, and good morning, Melanie. I'm so glad that you guys are watching this morning. Well, Thanks to uh, Black Friday and Cyber Monday and Giving Tuesday, I am almost done with my Christmas shopping, but I'm kind of hoping that today might just be a take the day off Wednesday. I think that maybe there's some need for that. So um, good morning, Harry. Good morning. Um, so good to see you guys, Erica. Um, so glad that you guys are checking in. But because of all of those um, non-national holidays like Black Friday and Cyber Monday and Giving Tuesday, I'm almost done with my Christmas shopping. Um, not quite. I do love the internet because I have done 100% of my Christmas shopping from my couch in pajamas so far this year. So that's super exciting. Um, good morning, Bill. Glad you're getting your exercise in while you're watching. Good morning, Meredith. Um, so I do love the internet that in the, in the midst of a global pandemic, I can still do my Christmas shopping. So I'm not quite done yet, um, but I'll keep you posted. I know you want to know when I'm done with my Christmas shopping. So good morning, Chris. Glad you're checking in. We are in our first week of Advent, um, and we want to encourage each of you to take advantage of our online line resource, um, Rediscover Christmas, and you can find that at colonialkc.org slash advent. It's a PDF file that you can download, and every day it has a Bible verse and then a little like two paragraph reading that you can do, and that scripture is what all of the pastors are, are using for their daily devotional. So it's kind of just a little supplemental resource um, that we hope you take advantage of. Good morning, Dal Ann. It's so fun to see your name. We got to pray for you this past week um, at church, and it's always a pleasure to, to pray for you and, and all the people out there. Good morning, Jane. Um, so this is the first week of Advent, um, and it signifies hope. If you have an Advent wreath at your house, hopefully you have lit the first candle. We have an Advent wreath, and I have yet to light the candle, but maybe tonight. We'll see. Um, and as you are spending this week pondering and, and thinking about and contemplating hope, um, the Israelites clung to the hope of a promised Messiah who would lead them out of the dark and difficult times that they were in. And I think that this particular year that is especially poignant, I think many of us can relate to a dark and, and difficult year um, in which we are clinging to hope. And it is not hope in a vaccine. It's not hope in a political leader. It is not hope in racial reconciliation or financial freedom. It is hope in a coming savior, a Messiah um, who will come again. And as we spend this week reflecting on hope and rediscovering hope, I was struck by the very idea of, of the word hope. I mean, I know what it is. I know it's important, but, but, but what is it? How do, you, how do you define hope? And Merriam-Webster Dictionary defines hope as a desire accompanied by expectation of or belief in fulfillment. The Westminster Dictionary of Theological Terms divides Christian hope as the anticipation of the future hope as the fulfillment of God's purposes based on God's covenant faithfulness and the resurrection of Jesus as known by the work of the Holy Spirit in the church. That is a really big definition. So let me say it one more time. Christian hope is the anticipation 
of the future as the fulfillment of God's purposes. The future is, is, our, is the fulfillment of God's plan based on his covenant faithfulness and the resurrection of Jesus. And we know this by the work of the Holy Spirit. And these two definitions, the, the Merriam-Webster definition and the Westminster definition, are strikingly different to me. There's that common theme of a, of a future fulfillment. But what is being fulfilled is so very different in these definitions. In in the Merriam-Webster Dictionary, it says hope is a, a desire accompanied by the expectation um, or belief in fulfillment. Desire or, or aspiration or wanting or longing or hunger or need, these all give the impression of something individual, something unique to a particular person. And we all have different hopes and, and somehow all those individual, unique, and separate hopes are, are all going to be accomplished in the future to fulfill our own individual desires. Maybe. Maybe that'll happen. But that's not true hope as, as the scriptures explain it. It's not real hope, Christian hope. We don't have some arbitrary, individualized hope. We have a collective hope, a, a corporate hope that, that God's purposes will be fulfilled and that we, as his chosen people, holy and dearly loved, as children of God, will be part of that fulfilled purpose through the resurrection of Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit. That is hope. And that is what we cling to. It is that same hope in an eternal and unshakable Savior that the Israelites clung to in the centuries before Jesus' birth, his life, death, and resurrection. They knew they were part of God's plan. And they knew that his plan would someday be fulfilled. That is what they put their hope in. That is what we should put our hope in. God's purposes for us, for, for creation and for this world, those purposes will absolutely be fulfilled. We know that's true. We anticipate his coming. We anticipate the celebration of his birth some 2,000 plus years ago, and we anticipate his future second coming in which all God's plans will find their ultimate fulfillment. Today we are in the book of Isaiah, chapter 43, verses 1 through 2. And, and I know I say this a lot, but I love these verses of scripture. And usually for my daily devotionals, I will um, work out of my study Bible, the HCSV translation. Sometimes I'll use the ESV because I know that's what the other pastors use. That's what many of, of you use. Um, but when it is verses like these that I have this heart attachment to, when it is... Um, scripture that I have memorized and quoted and shared and clung to in my own trials, I will almost always go back to my beloved NIV. Um, that is the translation that I do most of my scripture memorization in. That is um, what my first study Bible was in. And so when I read the NIV, it is like this familiar welcoming home. It is like a, a warm hug from God when those words just surround me. And so today I'm going to be reading from the NIV translation. So open your Bibles and follow along with me in Isaiah chapter 43 verses 1 through 2 and I'm going to tag on the first part of verse 3 as well. Isaiah writes, but now this is what the Lord says. 
He who created you, O Jacob. He who formed you, O Israel. Do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. Now, if you recall, Isaiah was written after the fall of the northern kingdom, prior to or, or during the fall of the southern kingdom. And God's people had spent centuries by this point in disobedience. And they were now facing the consequences of that disobedience. All of them. They had plenty of things to be fearful of. These verses start with a reminder of who God is. The, the one who created Jacob. The one who formed Israel. And I want you to pay attention to those names and the order of them. Jacob was one of God's chosen people who had a very questionable character. He stole his twin brother's inheritance. He ran away from home. He cheated Laban out of a portion of his flock. He wrestled with God. And yet, despite all that bad behavior, God treated him with tenderness. He blessed him with 12 sons, renamed him Israel, and built a nation from him. Here, God is telling that same nation, you have acted like Jacob. You have demonstrated Jacob's character, and yet I will treat you like Israel. I will be faithful to the covenant I made with Israel. Our salvation, our, our hope is not based on our own actions. Praise the Lord. My hope is not dependent on me. We have not earned a savior by our own doing. Our hope comes solely by God's amazing grace, by his covenant faithfulness to his people, given to us freely because of our faith in Jesus Christ. Though we may act like Jacob, he treats us like Israel. He created us, he formed us, and he has firm plans for us. Plans that have been and will be accomplished through the birth of Jesus Christ and his life, death, and resurrection. This passage goes on to say familiar words spoken so many, many times in scripture. Do not be afraid. And, and I laugh a little bit because when have you ever been afraid, truly afraid, terrified, and someone just saying the words, don't be afraid, has changed your fear. Telling someone not to feel something rarely is enough to get those feelings to stop. But these aren't just words here. God, speaking through Isaiah, doesn't just end with a command, don't be afraid. He tells them why they shouldn't be afraid. Don't be afraid because I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. You are mine. And this is what we have our hope in. Because God is God, because he is completely sovereign and his will will be accomplished, that is a done deal. The truly amazing part is that we are his redeemed people. The God of the universe is on your side. He has called you by name to be part of his family. Don't miss that. Not only was Israel God's chosen people, not only are you one of God's chosen people, but because of that, you will never be alone. 
And I know that sometimes our feelings don't match that reality, but feelings are not always an accurate reflection of reality because the reality is you are not alone. When you pass through the waters, and trust me, you will. This isn't an if you pass through waters, but when you pass through the waters, God will be with you. When you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you pass through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. This imagery of, of water and fire are traditional symbols for, for testing that, that when they're used together, they suggest totality, completeness. No matter where you go, through water, through fire, through anything in between, God has promised to protect his people from destruction, regardless of the trials that they are in. And this isn't an empty promise. God demonstrated this to his people who literally passed through the waters multiple times in their history. The Red Sea, the Jordan with Joshua, the Jordan again with Elijah. He was in the fire with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And they escaped completely unharmed. God has done this in the past and he will do it in the future because he will be with his chosen people. Because he is the Lord, their God, the Holy One of Israel, their Savior. And God is with us today. Whatever it is that you are going through, whatever is causing your hope to falter, Jesus is there. He is with us you. He is your Lord, the Holy One of Israel. He is your Savior. He's in the deep waters with you. He is in the fire with you, and he will not let you drown. He will not let you be burned. He will not let you be destroyed, because Jesus came to this earth to redeem you, to summon you by name. You are his. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we rest in this truth that we are yours, your chosen and protected people. And because of that, our hope is secure. Your plans will be fulfilled and we get to be part of those plans. Because we are your people, we will never be alone. You are with us in the fire. You are with us in the water. You are with us in whatever trials come our way. You will redeem us. Of that we can be sure. Lord, thank you for these promises and let this truth sink deep into the hearts of all those who are watch, watching today. In your name we pray, amen. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you'll be back here tomorrow at 10 a.m. for Daily Devotionals with Pastor Todd. If this was a blessing to you or if you think this might be an encouragement to someone that you know or someone else out there, please share this on your Facebook page and I'll be back here next Wednesday. We'll see you then. Bye.